Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a really fun reading vlog. I am going to be reading books that have titles based off of Taylor Swift music. So these are books that have titles that were definitely inspired by either a Taylor Swift song title or some lyrics that she has. And I'm actually really excited about this. If y'all don't know, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I love her, I love her music. So I'm gonna be picking books that have titles that remind us of Taylor Swift songs, Taylor Swift titles, whatever the case may be. Um, I already have my first one pulled up that I'm gonna pick up. This is gonna be my first Stacey Hart book. I've heard actually pretty good things about Stacey Hart. This one's called Champagne Problems. So we all know Champagne Problems is a very popular song. I love this song. And this book actually came out back in 2020. And I think it was previously titled, oh, Fool Me Once was its previous title. She changed to Champagne Problems recently. It looks like these two characters come from different worlds. Our hero has like a leather jacket and is among motorcycles. And the heroine is a trust fund kid hailing from the Upper East Side, but that's not their biggest problem. There's like a secret between them or something like that. I don't know, they end up meeting at a party and they um, are very intrigued by the other person, so it seems. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to dive on in. I'll let you know my thoughts and throughout the video, I'll let y'all know other books I decided to pick up inspired by Taylor Swift lyrics. I'm about halfway through Champagne Problems by Stacey Hart. And it's interesting. It's giving me kind of like Gossip Girl vibes and Serena and Dan vibes specifically. Um, the heroine's even like blonde. She's a socialite. She lives in the Upper East Side and then our Dan character, I don't remember his name because I'm listening on audio, but our Dan character, if you will, um, he is not from that lifestyle, um, but he's a writer. Okay, giving me Dan vibes again. Um, he's a writer and he has like an in with these secret parties that are going on on the Upper East Side with these socialite daughters and sons, children, if you will. And he works for this newspaper and he's really wanting to get a promotion because he wants this specific writing job and he thinks that if he can write these awesome articles about these parties these secret parties then he will have this opportunity to get a promotion these parties are apparently like put on by this mysterious woman i think her name's like cecilia or something and no one knows who she is she's so mysterious it's our heroine and i think her two friends that are kind of like cecilia like they put on the parties and stuff anyway they end up meeting at one of the parties he gets an in and they meet in a meeting and it's kind of like lust at first sight when they see each other. And it's really cool because these parties are also like costume parties. So they were kind of like dressed up like people from the Roaring Twenties. And then like the next one was like a circus theme. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. There is obviously going to be the conflict of he's the one writing these articles about her parties and she feels very like violated that this person has been sneaking into her parties and writing articles because she doesn't know that it's the guy that she's seeing right now so that's obviously going to be a point of contention between the two i am currently sitting in a walgreens parking lot it's been a stressful <laughs> a stressful day and it's only been going on for like an hour but um i take medication for one of my for one of my chronic illnesses i take medication for it i normally get a prescription for the past few years i've gotten a specific prescription at oh there's a loud car next to me excuse the car um anyway i've gotten the prescription at a specific grocery store that i go to in the next town over last time i got my prescription filled the pill looked different normally my pill is a like yellow and it's oval shaped and um now it was a circle and it was white and we checked to make sure that it was like still the prescription it was it's just from a different manufacturer anyway i felt absolutely awful if y'all know at the beginning of february i had a horrible week full of migraines and heart palpitations like it was not good i stopped taking the medication because i realized that's something new that's i've been putting in my body is this new pill and the migraines stopped after a day or two after i stopped taking that pill and the heart palpitations started going down and i was like i think it's that pill like whoever's making it like that is affecting me so negatively and this the previous pill that i took for it like it was yellow and um oval shaped i never felt any kind of reaction like that for it so i'm like I think this pill is affecting me. And so I go today to get my prescription refilled um, and it's the white pill again. And I'm like, I cannot have this white pill. And I was like having a definite anxiety moment, like almost crying <laughs> at the pharmacist. Like they were all really sweet, but like stuff like this, I catastrophize. And I'm like, what if this pill is discontinued? Cause the pharmacy that I was previously at, like 
they said they don't carry it anymore because they don't go to that manufacturer anymore. They don't get pills from that manufacturer anymore. And so I'm like, well, if no one carries that manufacturer anymore, like I am screwed. I need this pill to live. <laughs> like I need it to live. And if I take the different one, I have part, heart palpitations and feel like I'm dying. So I need this to be fixed. They said that they could transfer a prescription over to a different pharmacy. And praise Jesus that Walgreens does. <laughs> it was across the street. So I was like, perfect and they said that it would take about an hour or so to get refilled i'm just gonna be chilling in the parking lot listening to this book reading and um decompressing <laughs> that's like stuff like that really stresses me out because i start thinking like worst case scenario what if no one has this pill i'm screwed if no one has this pill i already had like a lineup of all the different pharmacies around me that i would go to to figure out if they have this pill or not because i need this specific pill i was just freaking out freaking out I was almost crying thank goodness I was I feel like if this place didn't have my pill I would be crying in the car right now <laughs> so and I know it's like very trivial like Avery you're crying over a pill like it's fine it'll work itself out like I've gone through a lot with my health and any step back that I feel feels absolutely gut-wrenchingly awful and so if I would have to take that pill again like the white one like I would feel awful I would feel like I'm dying. Like it feels like you're dying with my my heart palpitations. I have this chronic condition called IST, inappropriate sinus tachycardia, and basically your heart double beats, and it feels like your heart is coming out of your chest. Like it's beating like the cartoon, like the heart beating out of your chest. Like that's what it feels like, and it feels like you can't catch your breath. And it's totally normal for me. I will not die like from it, but like it feels like you are. It feels like you are dying, and um. I don't, I don't like feeling like that. It's absolutely awful. And I've already talked to my doctor and the only way to fix my medical condition like that is to have surgery that is very high risk. And if the surgery doesn't go well, then um, I could have a pacemaker put in my body at the age of 25, which we do not want that. So that's a little bit of my medical problems for y'all, but um, I wanted to vlog more of my life and I needed someone to vent to. So here's my venting. I did get something in walgreens because look at these nails i love this brand of nails i first heard about it from riley from riley marie called olive in june and i got these like kind of like pinky pinky nail pink dark pink nails um and i think i'm gonna wear these for a wedding that i'm going to literally in a few days so i think these will be a perfect fit for the dress that i have picked out for that because it kind of like has this color flower on the dress so i got these <laughs> maybe i'll put them on while i'm waiting I don't know because it's Monday and we leave on Friday. Will they last that long? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna continue Champagne Problems. It's not my favorite book in the world right now, but I am hooked and it's definitely giving me like Gossip Girl vibes, which I haven't really ever read in a romance book, I don't think before. So I am enjoying it. I finally got my medication and then I did finish Champagne Problems by Stacey Hart. This book was definitely an interesting read for me. I could see similarities to certain things I think I previously mentioned. Like I felt like very gossip girl vibes with like Serena and Dan and that like Upper East Side rich kid life. And then you have this guy coming in from the outside kind of like infiltrating their lives, infiltrating their space, their world, and ultimately writing about it. But then he obviously ends up falling in love with our Serena character. I don't remember her name. I apologize. Like I'm horrible with names. But she is like the Serena character. She's got blonde hair. She kind of like organizes these lavish big parties and kind of like the big explosion moment that I thought was going to happen did happen. So um, I kind of like saw that coming. But if we're talking about like does this book give me Taylor Swift vibes? Because I want to like see if these books do with their title. I am maybe thinking like 1989 vibes because it takes place in New York and you have like that lavish like lifestyle involved. And I know that 1989 was very influenced by the Taylor's like New York life. So I would definitely relate it to that one, but it doesn't necessarily give me Taylor Swift vibes if that makes sense. I do feel like Stacey Hart based off what I read. I've only read this by her but I feel like with her writing and her plot points in this book I feel like Stacey Hart is a great like introduction into the romance world because I've already read quite a few books that have a lot of the same tropes, plot lines, things that were going on in here. I feel like a lot of romance books have that and so I feel like this would be a great starter book for people trying to get into the romance genre or like Stacey Hart is a 
author in general because I assume that her writing style is going to be very similar in all of her books. So I do recommend this to new romance readers for sure. My next pick for this video is I Think He Knows by Katie Bailey. This is actually the second book in a series and I didn't know that before going in but I think the heroine in here, I think the first book was about her brother falling for somebody. This book is about Lana May and Carter. So this book starts out with Lana May in high school. This is 10 years before the book actually takes place. So Lana May is in high school and she decides to go to the local college. Um, there's a frat party going on because her boyfriend is there and she wants to see her boyfriend. And she ends up meeting this other guy named Carter there. And she's like, oh, have you seen my boyfriend? Like, I know that you're in the frat as well. And he doesn't know how to tell this girl that her boyfriend is a scum and has been hooking up with every single girl that he can on campus until she sees it herself. Like her boyfriend and uh, this girl that he's hooking up with, like basically fall out of a room together, like kissing. And she just runs out of there and Carter goes to check in on her. And from that moment on, Lana May and Carter are like best friends. He's there for her all the time for the past 10 years, especially when Lana May found out she was pregnant from said scumbag. So this is a single mom romance. Um, this book like mainly, like it jumps 10 years later. That was like the prologue basically. It jumps 10 years later where Carter is now this very famous actor and Alana May is a single mom and Carter is still her best friend. But then there's this rumor going around that Carter has this mysterious fiance. She's like, who is this fiance? Turns out it's her. Like there's this rumor going around that she is engaged to Carter. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I'm about, I think 30% of the way through this one. And I'm actually really liking it. There have already been multiple Taylor Swift references, which I think are actually pretty fun. Like they're not, not tasteful. Like sometimes when pop culture is referenced in romance books, like it's not tasteful sometimes. Sometimes it gives me the ick, but this book hasn't really. I'm actually really enjoying this. Both characters are essentially pining after each other and they think that the other person doesn't want them. It's that simple and that's why they haven't admitted their feelings is because they don't want to ruin their friendship because they don't think that the other one feels the same way. Um, like this heroine is just now starting to go on dates after 10 years. She thinks she's ready and um, the hero's like, oh, okay. And she never insinuated that she wanted to go on a date with him. And that's also the other way around. The heroine told the hero like, hey, I think I want to start dating. And he never said anything like, how about you date me? It is interesting with him being this famous actor because as many of y'all know, I don't like celebrity romances. I don't like them most of the time. Like I find them very unbelievable. <laughs> and it kind of gives me the ick sometimes. Um, but this one has not, so that's a plus. This one has actually been pretty good in that department at least. Um, I do love the single mom aspect. The heroine's kid is pretty funny. I have a theory on what's gonna happen. So the kid has this like daddy daughter like camp sleepaway with her like class. Like they're gonna go camping with their dads and she doesn't have a dad. Her dad is not in the picture. Her dad does not wanna be in the picture. The guy who like cheated on her mom. And so she's kind of like pushing her mom to go on dates and she's like, I haven't signed my permission slip for this field trip yet because I'm hoping the dates that you're going on this week work out and then I have a dad. Like, <laughs> that's not how it works, but okay. But I have a feeling that um, the hero Carter is going to be going on this trip with her or something and like volunteers to like be her dad figure on this trip. I'm actually really liking this. So yeah, the audiobook is pretty good um, and I can't wait to listen to more. Ollie is very happy because I'm home today. I'm home today, right? <laughs> so there was this nasty storm last night. Like we've had a really bad bout of weather in um, my town in Texas recently, honestly. Um, and also don't y'all love my socks? My sister got them for me for Christmas. <laughs> There's little dog ones, they have little cat ones and another animal I don't remember right now. Um, but anyway. <laughs> I'm putting on my fuzzy socks because it is, it's 9.45 on a Friday where I'm supposed to have work. There was this nasty storm last night, but I woke up to like the employee group chat saying like, oh, there's no power. So um, they had like a delay start till 10 o'clock and I was literally on my way to work, like halfway down my street when I got a text that says like, power's still not on. And we cannot guarantee the power's still gonna be on. So stay home, so. I had to come back home, so that's fun. But anyway, I finished um, I Think He Knows 
and this was fun. This is definitely categorized as a rom-com. If you would like a close door romance, that's what this is. There's not even like a hint of anything, which kind of shocked me because there is a lot of like tension with the characters. So that did surprise me a little bit, but I think I said in my last clip, like I didn't really mind the celebrity aspect. Um, I think that's because at the beginning, like we didn't even really get like a sense of the celebrity part. Like he didn't seem like a celebrity and the second half was chock full of him being recognized and going to like these events and stuff and I don't care for that. I know I'm not a big celebrity romance person, but this book was chock full of um, Taylor Swift references. So if you want that, even the hero like references her sometimes. There's a lot of pop culture references, so be aware of that. So overall, I thought this was a great read. If you like rom-coms, I think that you'd really like this one. I know not everyone's a fan of a rom-com, but if you love rom-coms and you love Taylor Swift, I feel like you'd really like this. Yeah, I would recommend it to people who want a book in those categories. Now I'm off to my next book, which I am so excited for. I think that's the whole reason why I did this video was for this one book, because I want, I want to read it so bad. I just got the audiobook in from my Libby. I'm gonna listen to it like right now. Can we talk about how freaking cute this book is? It's so cute. And I'm gonna be putting on my apron. I know it's a Christmas apron, but my other one is dirty. Um, but I'm going to be baking Today I'm gonna to be making some Easter cookies for an order for somebody. But anyway, this book is so flippin' cute. <laughs> like I can't stop listening to it. <laughs> I couldn't listen to it at work because I just wanted to like squeal the whole time on my breaks when I had time to listen to it. I just kept, I was like, no, I gotta save this for when I'm at home and can squeal at home because it's just so stinking cute. I'm like 50% of the way through and they're just now like, Oh my gosh, I haven't read a book where like characters just like kissing for the first time gives me like whole oh, butterflies in my stomach. They're so cute. Like this is the epitome of a friends to lovers romance. I am loving this. I need more people to read. Well, right now, 50% of the way through, I'm loving it. I'm hoping it sticks um because it's just so it's so good it's so cute there's obviously not any taylor swift references like uh, pop culture references because this is a historical romance but i feel like this is doing an amazing job at being like a sapphic historical i don't think i've read i've never read a sapphic historical i don't think but i've read historical romances with other lgbtq plus representation um so i don't think i've ever read a sapphic one but this one is so it's so good. These two are so stinking cute. And I love like the different characteristics that our author is having both of our women have. Like they're so cute. And there's like also this like parent trap kind of moment because they figure out that their parents used to be a thing when like they were introduced to society. Um, but for whatever reason, like it did not end on good terms. And so they're trying to kind of like parent trap their parents but then they end up falling for each other at the same time. It's so cute. It's so cute. Uh, I need to like listen to it while I bake cookies and just like be happy. This book is making me happy. I finished my order. It is late at night, but I feel like these are pretty good for like only the first two times like doing them. So yay, we got bunnies, flowers, carrots and easter eggs all for an easter themed cookie set y'all don't even want to see the table behind the counter he's a mess but some of these look okay some of them i'm really proud of this one i think this one's really pretty so i like that one a lot but i have to wait for them to like fully dry before packaging them up so but I think my bunnies turned out pretty good. There is some like bleeding and stuff. But it's for like someone I know and she's I know she's not picky. Like she loves anything I make, honestly. That's what she said to me. So yeah. And then I have like duds like I can't I have duds like these, look. Like that looks so bad. And then this one looks bad too. <laughs> like it looks so bad. So I'll be eating these at some point. Um but I'm glad I made like extra, so. I'm like learning as I go. You know what I mean? I'm learning what to do. It's, 
it's it's a thing but i finished the entirety of don't i like a best friend while doing all these cookies like i literally finished the book a second ago and my last cookie a second ago i'm giving this book five stars i love this book i do i know that i think it's like a three point something rating on goodreads so i don't know if i want to read other people's reviews because i don't want to get my heart broken but like i loved this book there's so many different relationships besides our main one and i love when that happens when like i feel like that's very apparent in historical romances where historical authors will like have like a little side romance happen at the same time and i think it's so cute i love that in historicals the conflict of the story made sense for the time period and characters and what they were going through so that totally made sense to me um but everything worked out at the end obviously because it's a romance book and i hope that um the author writes more in the series because there was like an inkling a hint to who the next book could be about possibly um but i don't know if like that was just like something that the characters are gonna do later on or if this will actually become like a full-length book i have no idea if it'll actually become a book but it'd be really cool if it was but um i say this book is a success i felt like it gave me taylor swift vibes in the fact that like so much of this book was like sweepingly romantic and that's what i feel when i read not read whoa listen to a taylor swift album like i do I feel like those hidden moments with our heroines was like, oh, it was like, it gave me, like I said before, it gave me butterflies. Like these two deserve the whole world. And I loved seeing them finally get it in this book at the end. So I love this one. I need more people to read it. It's really good. Um, I like it a whole heck of a lot. We're gonna go pick up my last book for this video, but I'm actually really enjoying like reading these books with these fun titles because it's making me pick up books like I've been wanting to read for a while and it's like giving me the push to do that. So I'm very excited about that. I'm here to close out this vlog. I am currently reading my last book for this video, which is In Your Wildest Dreams by Rebecca Jenshack. This is the fourth book in a series, the Wildcat Hockey series. So I believe all the books in the series are hockey romances. And this book starts out with our hero seeing our heroine in the stands at one of his hockey games and he just becomes smitten with her. It's kind of like love at first sight for him, but she's there with her boyfriend. And um, ever since that point, he has looked out for her at every single home game, hoping that she shows up. A few months after he first notices her, he ends up getting a concussion on the ice and who just so happens to be his nurse at the hospital but our heroine. I'm about 25% of the way through this and I know I haven't finished it for this video, but I do need to wrap this video up. Um, I'm not in the fastest reading speed right now in my reading journey this year. I am definitely slowing down with my reading. So I thought I would just update y'all in what I'm feeling right now about this book. I'm actually really enjoying it. I have not read a hockey romance in a minute. So I kind of like that. I kind of like how I'm getting back into the genre a little bit because I felt like last year, like, Hockey Romance was definitely dumped on all of us, <laughs> dumped on the romance genre. But I am really enjoying it. It doesn't necessarily right now remind me of anything Taylor Swift related. No Taylor Swift has been mentioned at all. But I do like the play on words within your wildest dreams and then the hockey team is called like the wildcat hockey team so whenever i finish the book i will definitely put my review on goodreads so you can go check that out if you want more of my thoughts especially when i finish this book but that's about it i read four books that were inspired by taylor swift lyrics let me know down below if you have any recommendations that also have titles inspired by taylor swift lyrics i would love to check them out because taylor swift is everything. You can also let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them down below in the comments. But if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a guitar emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.